Hello everyone, Stephanie Davis here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be sharing how to use Arteza Real Brush Pens. But first, I'd like to welcome you if you're new and give you a brief little peek at my studio, which many of you have asked about. It's very crowded and a little messy, but it's full of the things I love the very most. So I wanted to share with you how I stored my brushes before I got this organizer. I've been keeping them both flat in my organizer with the rest of my Copics, as well as in a little vase. I purchased the 96 brush pen set myself with my own money last October, and that's when I started this video for you guys, but then Arteza reached out to me and they wanted to send me this wonderful travel bundle. I thought it would be perfect to share both the how to use these brush pens as well as the new travel bundle with you guys here today. They also sent me some watercolor pads that are student grade watercolor pads that are really great to use, as well as this 96 real brush pen travel bundle. So I'm gonna open this up and let you guys see inside. Now on the back, it has a zipper compartment where it has a little pocket that will open and close. And then on the top, it has the little handle and it has an adjustable shoulder strap that you can completely remove if you'd like to. It's adjustable and it has a little padding there so it'd be comfortable to wear on your shoulder. And then in the front, it has some removable clasp that you can open it and it's attached with Velcro and the sides have Velcro, making it really easy to open and reveal all of these wonderful 96 real brush pens. It's like a giant book of glorious colors. So it has all of the shades from the rainbow, and it has your neutrals, and then it also has some extra loops that you can put any supplies you'd like into it that will fit. It also has a water brush there on top, and those loops are slightly bigger. They fit my Lamy pen. And in here, I'm going to try some of my favorite supplies to see if they're gonna fit in those loops. And just about everything I would have wanted to take with me will fit, except for Copic markers. So Copic markers don't fit, but all of my colored pencils fit. I could even get some scissors in there. So it's gonna make it really easy to have this bag right in my car when I'm waiting for my son every day and I'm waiting 20 or 30 minutes. The middle section also is fully removable and it makes it easy to keep it right on your desk if you want to have it all rainbow order perfectly straight. And then I'm going to attach the Velcro and put it back together and show you what it's assembled, what it's like. It's really great. Now the back pocket is really thin and I could get this watercolor pad, but it was really tight. I would be worried it was a little too tight to me, but this little sketchbook fit and also a couple stamps would fit. Now this travel bundle currently has a retail price of $83.99 on the Arteza website, but I will have a coupon code below in the description box for 15% off. Always double check Amazon because sometimes they can be cheaper on Amazon, but right now they're much cheaper with the coupon code on the Arteza website. They are also selling single colors in a pack of four on the Arteza website in case there's one color that you just absolutely love. So now I'm going to show you how I make my swatch charts. I believe having a swatch chart is the best way to truly get the most out of your art supplies. So I use this micropore tape. I will have it linked below and I line it up on my watercolor paper. I find it easier to line it up on my watercolor paper first and then line it up with the grid lines. You can use any kind of grid mat that you have, but I'm using the Tim Holtz glass media mat. I'm also using the media tool set, which I don't recommend at all, but I finally found a use for it making my swatches. You can use a clear ruler. This just has wheels that align with a glass mat, so it kind of keeps it straight for me, so I find it a bit easier. So I'm using that to kind of save the place for me so I can see where my next column is going to be and I can easily eyeball it and that way I don't have to get a ruler out and do all the measuring which I'm too lazy to do because I want this to be fun. And then I use the grid lines on the mat to just eyeball where to put the micropore tape to make the horizontal lines as well. I like to tape off watercolor paper like this so I can get a nice gradient swatch of each color without the patience of staying in the lines. I also make sure and do this on 100% cotton watercolor paper because I get a much better result using cotton water paper rather than like Canson's which is cellulose paper. And then the fun swatching begins. So all I do is take my brush marker just like I would color and I go about three-fourths along the way and then I use my water brush pen that has water in it and simply go over it and make a gradient wash. 
It's super easy because I'm not worrying about staying in any lines and I find it really relaxing. So I'm going to go along and I'm going to swatch all these out for you guys and you can see all the beautiful colors while I go ahead and give a review. Let's begin with the pros of these real brush pens. So my first pro is with the company Arteza. I think they have done really well taking everyone's feedback. I reviewed these the first time about a year ago and they took everyone's feedback and they have improved these. They've improved putting the names on them. They pretty much took care of all of the complaints that anyone had. And so I commend them for that. The other pro is that these are, I think, are very easy for beginners, yet still a lot of fun for experienced crafters and artists. I think anybody can have fun with these. And because they're so affordable, they don't have any of that precious factor. Like I've had with, I've bought a lot of expensive art supplies and they're harder for me to use. As much as I love them, they're harder for me to use sometimes because I'm afraid I'm going to ruin them or I'm going to waste them. So these give you a lot of freedom and you'll see later in the video, I've been able to try many of things I don't think I would have tried if I wouldn't have started out with more affordable supplies. So I think that's great. You can really get some beautiful blends if you use the right paper and I think they're a great alternative for Copics for beginning crafters and artists. And I think that the company motto is great, that they're trying to keep art affordable for everyone. And as someone who grew up loving to draw, but my parents couldn't afford to even buy me paper or Crayola markers, I really commend that, that they're trying to keep it affordable for everyone. I also love that there's no smell to these, so I can use these at home and I can take them on an airplane or wherever I like to in public without worrying about having offensive odors that other people wouldn't appreciate. These are also listed as being non-toxic, though I have to say if I had small children, I wouldn't trust that. If I thought there was any way that the, they would put it in their mouth, I would never let them use it. I've been using this travel case a bit while I'm in the car rider line waiting for my son, and it has been great because I, it fits so many things in it. It's easy, it's compact, the markers are really easy to get in and out of the loops, and it's made it really easy. I can see this being great for taking on vacations or if I was sitting at a doctor's office, something like that. But primarily I've been using it in the car rider line where I'll wait quite a while to pick up my son after school. So I think they're great for that. But there's lots of fun things you can do with these. You can do everything from faux water coloring. You can smush color on acetate and add some water and then make some pretty backgrounds. I'm going to show some ways I've been using them later on in the video and I hope it gives you some inspiration of what you can do as well. So now I'm going to finish up this color chart and then I'm going to go ahead and remove the micropore tape and this is what I love about using it. It comes off so easily even though I added water it doesn't tear. I've been using, I've been doing it this way for over a year now and I have yet to add any paper tear. Now I am only using watercolor paper and I usually use arches for my watercolors, but for this I'm using the Arteza 100% cotton watercolor paper. And it is thicker and it really works better than the Canson. I tried it on the Canson and I've decided just to save the Canson for when I'm trying new watercolor mixes and, you know, general practice work. But for my swatches I try to use good watercolor paper. Okay, so now let's talk about the cons because of course there are. So for the cons of these real brush pens, I would say the biggest con is that paper matters and I don't find that you can use really cheap paper and get good results with this. And a lot of times when people email me and tell me they're not getting good results, that they can't get it to blend well, the number one question I have for them is what paper are you using? Because you can get, I'm going to show some examples later, but you can get good blends if you use watercolor paper or if you can use Bristol Smooth cardstock. But that's really the only papers I found that worked. To me, the next con is I find the greens and the gray shades a bit lacking once you've washed them out and added much water. As you can see now when I'm swatching out these greens, they have kind of a blue undertone when they're when a lot of water is added to them. In the full strength, they're perfectly lovely, but just washed out with a lot of water, then they have a weird kind of a blue undertone. Now, of course, there's a workaround because you can use other colors to neutralize it, but if gray is your favorite color then and you want to use those light shades of the grays, then 
you may not like the colors that you get from those blends. So, but I have found with the black especially, it kind of has a blue undertone as well, which actually makes lovely shadows because it kind of has a purpley undertone and makes lovely shadows and kind of reminds me of Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. So sometimes you can experiment and find a good workaround. But that's another reason I thought it might be helpful for you guys to see all these colors fully swatched out. Another con is while I love the nylon bristle tip, it's super fine and long. I have occasionally had one or two of the little bristles that just comes out really easy. Almost like it was going down the factory line and either the factory worker or the machine that was supposed to pull it was on a coffee break. Not very many and I've just had a few, but I have had those. Arteza does have a label on the back of all of their items saying that they guarantee your satisfaction and they want you to contact them if should you have any problems. And lastly, these are not quite as good as Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. They're close and for the price, I still would pick these just for the price because with a coupon, you can get the 96 set for $56 rather than 80 of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers for $120. And for more than double the price, these are really close. But I still would say if I had to pick which is actually better and not compare the price, I would still say the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers are a bit better. These are dye based, meaning they're not light fast, so they are craft quality. So I think for the bang for your buck, I would still think these are what I would invest in. You need to use a light hand when using these because some people are surprised they kind of were expecting them to be more juicy or watery. They are concentrated dye-based products and so they want you to add the water and make it as loose and watery as you'd like to. But some people are surprised by that. The nylon bristle tip is more like a watercolor brush than a felt tip pen for hand lettering. So I've removed all the micropore tape and I've labeled all the color names and there are my color swatches. So now I'm going to give you all the tips that I've learned over using these for the last year. And the biggest one being if you use watercolor paper your results are going to be a lot better. So I'm using Arsh's watercolor paper which is a more pricey watercolor paper that I love to use with all my watercolors but it also works with these pens. Not for every application, as you'll see later in the video, but it, I really have had a lot of success, especially beautifully blends when I use embossing. If I'm using stamped images, if I emboss at first, you can just get the most beautiful blends. And Arches has a unique way of sizing their paper, which makes it more absorbent, and that's why it works so well with regular watercolors. And I think it works with these brush pens as well. So I'm just using my water pen and I don't really squeeze any water out, I just let the residual water come out. But you can see how sometimes it's kind of dry when I use this marker, and that's because this paper is super absorbent. But it makes some really, really beautiful blends. I find just like with regular watercolors, when you have good paper, the paper works with you and works for you rather than against you. And sometimes if I use Canson watercolor paper, I can see harsh lines as if it's working against me. I'm going to be sharing lots of ways I enjoy using these brush pens, first of which being drawing in a sketchbook. I love drawing in a sketchbook with watercolor pencils, especially because my pencil lines don't show. I find it really easy to compare my reference photo to the color swatch chart to easily select which color is going to be best to use. After sketching the magnolias out with my watercolor pencils, I go directly over it with the Arteza Real Brush Pens. I like to do this in the evenings when I don't have very much time and I don't want to think about what to do. I just want to be creative. I loved sketching out these magnolias. As soon as Christmas is over, I'm craving flowers. And I used to have a magnolia tree in my front yard and I've been missing that, so I thought I would sketch it out. So I sketched it out with some watercolor pencils and those let me not have any pencil lines, so I really like that. But this is a sketchbook and so it's not the best quality paper. So they work okay and they're fun, but you really don't get the best blends, but it's a lot of fun and it's just quick and easy and you don't have to think about it. And I really enjoy the process. I think it's great practice and here I'll go ahead and start adding some shading at the bottom, which is what I like to do. And I'm using that reference photo kind of to tell me where to put more shadows and where the colors will be darker. And I just keep building up the colors and you can really build up easily 
especially if you'll let it dry a little bit and then go back and add a second layer after the first layer has dried. Now I'm going to add some neutral colors to color in the branches. And again, you'll see with my water brush, it doesn't blend all that great on this paper, but it's still a lot of fun and it doesn't have to look too realistic to have to be fun. I'll use the water brush and it's very just damp and I've got a cloth underneath that out of frame that I keep wiping off to remove more color to get more highlights and blend it very gently without using very much water. So I'm adding some shadows and trying to blend the gray with the brown and that gave a color, more of a color that I was looking for. Now I have intentionally cut out the flower on the right because I hated how it looked, but that's where I did not get the look I liked. I tried doing more of a wet on wet look and that did not work, especially with this paper. So I do encourage you to experiment with different papers, different techniques. Now I'm adding some more shadows and I'm actually using some marker that I have added to the glass mat. I'm going to show it here in a minute, but see how I've added, I've colored directly on that glass mat, which is why I'm using this mat. I love it for this. And I can pull some directly with my water brush just to add a little bit more color without getting too dark. If you have this glass mat, it works great. I know I've shared that before, but you can also use any ceramic plate or a palette. So next I'm going to use this Arteza 100% cotton paper. This is the cotton paper that I use for the swatches. I'm going to use this paper along with many other watercolor papers that I usually use and I'm going to stamp them out several times. I'm going to build this scene and I'm going to use a Gina K amalgam ink and this is a new ink that is barely going to show. The color is Whisper. And it'll show up for no line coloring and I'm unfortunately you're not going to be able to see it very well but I'll show it after I've stamped it so you can see what I'm doing. But I'm building this the scene with my Tim Holtz stamp platform and then I'm going to go in and add some extra branches and buds and just kind of build the scene for what I want to do. And I did this on several types of paper because I'm going to attempt no line coloring which is my nemesis. I'm not very good at it. I feel like I struggle and so I thought I would try this on all kinds of different watercolor papers and see which worked best and I was kind of surprised with the results. So once I got them all stamped out this is what they look like and I hope you can see that. It is a very light ink but it's perfect for no line coloring because it disappears into the paper and then you can see it only enough to color on. So I'm coloring the way I normally do with these real brush pens which is I start with the, generally I start with the darkest shade and then I blend out with the medium and then I go to the light, much like I do with Copics. Now this happens to be on Bristol Smooth cardstock, which I started with first because I anticipated that it would be one of the best. It didn't warrant it that way, but that's the way I thought it was going to be, so I started with this paper. This has been what I've told people to use in the past, but for this technique it really didn't work that well. I kind of struggled and getting it to, I got some harsh lines. I was able to remove some color to get nice highlights, but it really didn't blend as well as some of the other papers. And here you see I do use the water brush pen. I don't squeeze any water out, but I do let the residual water come out. And a lot of times I blot it off on that cloth that I have to my right. That is kind of my BFF of my craft room. I really don't craft without it. If I want a really light shade of the color that I'm using, I'll just take a little bit of the water brush and do tip to tip with the real brush marker. And it works really well. And you'll see at the end of the video, I'll show you what not to do. Use the water brush to pull some color from that. Just like you can pull a light shade from a medium shade and get some nice color blends, that works really well as well. And all you have to do afterwards is wipe off the brush marker on the cloth and it will take away all that color. So here I'm starting another Magnolia and I'm using the Arteza 100% cotton paper. This is 140 pound cold pressed paper, so it's pricey. Even for Arteza, it's pretty pricey. So if I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna make sure and show you guys if it's any good or not. So I'm doing it the same exact way. I started my dark shade, then my medium, and then my light, and I pull the color out. And here is where I was really surprised it actually works really well. It blends beautifully and I don't know if it's showing as well as it was in person but immediately I got really excited because I thought wow if this paper works really good the arch is, is going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm thinking right now when I'm making this. So I'm really excited and I can't wait to start the next petal. I'm starting the same exact way 
But the difference in this and the Bristol was it was more forgiving. And instead of kind of working against me and the, the water sitting on top of the paper and I had to hurry and remove it to not get a harsh line, this blended effortlessly and it worked with me instead of against me is the best way I can describe it. So here I'm taking the light the lightest shade and I'm just pulling some of that color out just like I do with Copics. I really don't know how else to explain it. Every now and then I wipe off my on my towel and here I'm just adding a little bit of the water brush but I'm taking most of the water out so I can get a nice blend. And I really just thought it blended really lovely. This, uh, spoiler alert, this did not come in number one so there's hope for crafty girls that don't want to spend a lot of money. <laughs> but this came out as the second best I thought and I was really surprised so I'm gonna keep blending and I'm because I thought it worked really well I'll keep trying new things I'll try to add a little more detail I tried to add a little more shading in different places to kind of see what it's gonna let me do and what it's not gonna let me do but I just take the water brush and really it's doing most of the work for me between the water brush and the paper it's really that easy so I just keep using my water brush, wiping it off to have it just barely damp and blending that out. And I'll keep going on and layer additional colors, starting with my dark, then going to my medium, and then using the lightest shade. And I'll just that just extends the color out. And then I go back with a water brush and just blend it. And it really just blends it itself, just with the water and the paper. So it's kind of magical, I think. So I'm going to keep showing you different ways that I was shading this flower and it looked really good and I apologize this video is going to be super long but if you haven't noticed already I do have it time stamped in the description box so you can skip to the section that you would like. So you can just skip ahead as much as you would like. I know many of you like to see every detail that I color and then others it's too long. So. I really can't make everybody happy, so you'll just have to skip ahead if you are tired of seeing this already. But I'm trying to show most of the shading I'm doing, as well as the tip to tip, which is probably one of my best tips because you can get such a good color variation and it blends really pretty that way. And I know I've showed you that way with Copics, and I just wanted to share that that's my favorite way to use the real brush markers as well. And again, I'm using my water brush to blend all that out. Now for these smaller sections on the inside, I want the shading, but it's too small of an area, so I just start with the tip to tip. And that gives me the nice color that I want, and I don't have as much blending to do, so it's easier in those smaller areas. Same with, with the inside of that petal, I want it to stay really nice and light, so I don't go in with any color. I just use some of the color, the lightest shade that was on the glass mat with the water brush. And now I'm going in and I'm adding some more shading on the inside just to get those lines and little bits that I'm just having fun really. I could have stopped, but I really think it's so fun to go back and add a little more shading. And that's when the watercolor paper really outshined the Bristol because it was so forgiving. Even after it dried, I could go back and add more. Whereas the Bristol paper, after I was done and it's dried, it's kind of done. It doesn't want to take in, it doesn't want to take too much more, I don't think. And if it does, you can see the harsh lines. So with this paper and the next kind of watercolor papers I'm going to show, then you can see that it really keeps, I could have kept adding it and layering and layering without being able to tell that I had come back later to do that. And now I'm just going to use some yellow. I'm using a lighter shade of yellow and a darker shade for the inside. And then I'm going to start coloring the tree branch. And this is where you can see that this paper is kind of like Arsh's. The, the brush pens go on kind of a bit dry on this paper, but they really blend out lovely with the water brush pen. So I'm going in and I'm adding, I'm blending the colors. And then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of dot detail on the inside of that flower. Now I'm starting with Arsh's paper, which I expected to be the best. I thought it was just going to be so beautiful and it was going to make music play all over my studio. But it started bleeding and I didn't know what I did wrong, so I'm going to start another petal and it's going to do the same exact thing. And I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't do it myself. 
because I love Arsha's paper. I can't even tell you. My husband makes fun of me and says I sleep with it under my pillow. I really don't. But it really is wonderful with watercolor paper, just not for the no line coloring. I do think you should definitely try it with just doing some heat embossing with like gold ink. It turns out really nice with that. But for the no line coloring technique, it does not work. So this is the paper that came in number one. I've skipped ahead because I did the same exact technique. I just did a little bit more shading, but this is B watercolor paper. And I just, I know I had just shared that. I had, I bought it back in January, but I think I just shared it. So this was the, for the money, this was the best paper. And I will have it linked below the exact paper that I used, but it is affordable. It's about $12 for a pack of 50, but you get a beautiful blend and it's not very pricey. So this paper was not quite as absorbent as the Arches. And now I'm going to go through and show all the different papers that I tested. I tested out all of my favorites that I usually love and swear by. Now I'm showing where I did it on the back and now I'm showing them all together. And you'll see how the Bristol Smooth, it actually even changed the color. And the Canson, the color doesn't even look as real. It looks more kind of fluorescent, which I thought was odd. I use the same exact colors for every, for every Magnolia. But they turned out different on the different papers. So now I'm doing close-ups so you can judge for yourself and have your own opinion. But in my opinion, the Arteza was number two and the B was number one. And I will use both of them again. I also did some on the back of the Arteza paper because I had done swatches and I just thought, well, why not waste it and try it? And that worked out well as well. Now, another fun way I like to use these is to make basically faux watercoloring looks. And I've done the no line coloring again, but now I'm going to pretty much make it look like transparent watercolors with a no line coloring. And it gives such a pretty look. I'm not going to finish any cards. I'm just going to give you techniques so you can use these in your own craft room. And I just used the water brush to pull some of that out and it looks light and like it would be a transparent watercolors that I used. And I love this technique. I think it's really pretty. I was kind of doing a uh, multicolor rainbow flowers. I don't know. They don't really exist like that probably, but I was just playing and I got some new stamps and I couldn't wait to try them. So that's another fun way. And you can just go in and directly add a little more color. And then I'm blending using that mat. It makes it really easy to blend all that color out and make it look really smooth and natural and I think like transparent watercolors would look. I know many of you are scared of watercolors and you want to get that look without using watercolors and I think this is a great way to do it. So here I'm actually removing that color because purple and orange don't make a pretty color and I caught it just in time. So I'm going to go back and cover that up after it dries. But it was really easy to remove that purple that I had started to add to the orange. And now I'm covering it with pink so it doesn't turn to brown. <laughs> Another way I love to use them is to simply color right on the clear stamp, which allows me to get another watercolor look. And then I use a super fine nib to shade a little bit, just in the shadows. And then I use my brush pen to blend it out. And again, it looks like faux watercolored images. And I'm using my cloth to remove most of the water. I want my water brush to really just be damp. So oftentimes I'm just removing water rather than adding it. And then now I'm going to color right on my flower stamp. And I'm going to blend that out with a water brush to give me a transparent watercolor look. And I can just start shading by building the color up on the stamp and directly stamping it. And it makes it super easy and it's really fun to uh, blend it out and just add more detail as you like. And then I'll use my water brush and I'll blend that out some more. Then I'll add some yellow to add some detail. I start with the yellow, the light yellow, and then I can add some dark yellow for just a little bit of shading and it adds all the little dots on the top of the flower. I think it turns out super pretty. And using my water brush, I just blend it all out. Now I'm gonna try a new way that I've never tried before, and it has mixed results. 
But I had all that watercolor paper that I basically wasted when I tried to draw the magnolias and they didn't work. So I've taken one of those sheets and turned it over on the back and I'm going to try to watercolor a sunset background on this watercolor paper. Now you can't get the watercolor flow. There's no ox gall, of course, in these markers. And you can't get the flowiness that watercolors have. But you can still do some fun things with drawing and just have fun and make it kind of resemble the same look. And that's what I was going for here. So I use my glass mat and I put down lots of color and then I'm just trying to make a sunset background. And then I decided just to go on with directly with the marker to get some more, to add more pigment. But this is the perfect time to learn something new and try something new. This paper was going to go in the trash anyway, so I thought I might as well try to do something different. Something that I haven't done with even watercolors yet, that I've been meaning to do. And so I'm trying to draw the sun and make it look a little bit like the sun is shining out the clouds. And, and um, I'm really just winging it here. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'm pretty sure it's going to go in the trash, but I just want to learn and try something new. So I wiped off my glass mat and I wanted a lot more purple. So I was able to add a lot of purple onto the glass mat. And then I take a damp brush and I start going along the edges. And I'm just trying to fill it in to get it a little more vibrant. And then add some shadows to the ocean waves. So I was trying to see how the paper and the this brush markers reacted. If you can remove color, if you can add color wet on wet. Wet on wet does not work very well. <laughs> I did find that out. But you might do better than I am because this is my first time doing anything like this. And I'm using my heat gun. And then now I'm going to try to draw a palm tree. And this is one I wish I would have pulled up a reference photo because I'm totally winging it here and it doesn't look the best. But this is my first time and you know, you just have to try new things because that's how you learn and that's how you grow, right? So now I'm using my water brush and I'm blending out my palm tree and trying to make it look, I kind of really wanted it to kind of look loose and not very literal. I want it to kind of be a loose watercolor picture which I'm really not good at. I, I'm trying to get better at it, but I'm not very good at that. But that's one of the things I love about these real brush markers. I think they give you the freedom to just play and be like a kid again, and it doesn't matter if you're gonna throw it away because it's not very expensive. And so you don't feel like you're wasting things. You don't feel like you've gotta hoard them. And you know, like a lot of my Schmincke paints, it took me a long time, as much as I love them, it took me a long time to use them very much because Quite honestly, I was afraid to use my expensive paints. I didn't want to waste them when I didn't know what I was doing. So this, these markers give you the excuse to try and play, even if you don't know what you're doing, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Now I'm taking some white gouache and I put it in my palette with, and then I used a little bit of water to dilute it a little bit. And I just used a black Arteza brush pen for my black splatters. And then I am going to use my Fine Tech Gold. Unfortunately, Arteza doesn't have any gold that I know of. So I did let that, I did let the water set in that pot so it would get mixed and be lovely. You do need to let that set for a little while. So I just keep going around and adding all the splatters. And now I'm going to add a little bit of fine detail to the palm tree. Just add some of the texture and dimension that I wanted. And then now I got a little greedy and I decided I wanted to keep going and add some more shadows. And it didn't look very nice because I don't think there'd really be that many shadows there <laughs> by the sunset. So then I erased it and you just use the wet paintbrush and you can take it away. And so I was able to lift out most of the color that I didn't want just using my watercolor brush and my cloth and then I add some splatters so it looks cohesive again and this is probably going to still go in the trash but at least I learned something and I tried something I've never tried before so I thought it would be fun for you guys to see my first attempt at a sunset background <laughs> that I can't believe I'm leaving in this video
Next, I wanted to try out the watercolor pads. I've used them for swatches in my craft room and all of my student grade paints, that's what I make my swatches in so I can have them all in one place. So I just grabbed a kitchen plate and this is what I recommend. I don't want you guys to think you've got to have that Tim Holtz glass mat. You really don't. You can use what you have. So I like blending on ceramic better than plastic, but I know you can use plastic palettes as well. It just beads up a lot and I find that frustrating, so that's why I prefer the glass or ceramic. So I'm seeing how it blends on this paper. It doesn't really blend out the best, but this is student grade paper and probably if I would have added the color to, you know, mix the colors before they dried, I kind of was slow adding them. It might have blended a lot better. But it blends beautifully if I blend it on a separate plate and then add the color. So if you're not going to use butter paper, then you'll want to blend on a plate or some kind of separate palette first and then go to the paper and then you can get much better blends. But this is where even though I have 96 beautiful colors, I keep wanting to try to see how many more colors I can come up with that I love. And I love this kind of violet red color and so I made my own and it's two parts of the violet and one part of the burgundy color that I'm using that escapes my memory right now, I apologize. But it makes the perfect shade of purple to me, uh, which is right here. And so I really had that color on my mind for some reason, so I wanted to try to make it and I was able to. I've been really wanting to try art journaling and I've never attempted it. I really don't know anything about it, but I did know you're supposed to use gesso. But then I read on the back, you've got to let it dry 24 hours. That's never happening in my life. I don't see how I'm going to plan 24 hours ahead of time that I want an art journal with gesso. So I'm mixing my own color and I'm just this I'm just totally winging it. I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I didn't want to waste all that beautiful color that was on that ceramic plate. And so I took some acrylic paint that was a free paint sample I got from Jackson's and I just smeared it on the page with a gift card that I had already used. It was going to go in the trash. So basically I'm using trash. I'm using things that I would throw away anyway. Now I'm going to take some lovely stamps from Altenew. I'm using two different sets and I'm using the Gina K Amalgam Ink because it is waterproof and it's archival and everything. So I so I don't think I'm going to ruin anything if I use that. So I stamped out all of the butterflies and the flowers and now I'm going to use my real brush pens to start coloring those flowers. And now I'm going to color all the flowers, but the footage did stop filming, so I apologize for that. But this video is incredibly long anyway, so I'm, I did you guys a favor. But this is just to give you an idea of some of the things you can try with these brush pens because you really are just limited by your imagination. So I went over and I colored all those, and I did add some Daniel Smith watercolors as well because I couldn't help myself. And I'm going through and adding some more Daniel Smith watercolors. And I really like that I couldn't tell which was which, and they seem to play well together. So I've never tried art journaling before, but I love the texture on this watercolor paper and can't wait to try again another time. So I don't really know if you're supposed to mix the Arteza Real Brush pens with acrylics, but it worked. And lastly is the easiest way to use these just on have a sketch. This happens to be a sketch that I traced from a Dana Fox book and it could not be easier. And this is what not to do. Please don't dip your tip in your water. Just pull it from the water brush because I could get the color back. It came back, but it took a while. So here I'm just lightly using the dark and then blending out with the medium shade. And then with the water pen, I'm able to go and get a good blend even on this student grade watercolor paper. Uh, you just have to be a little quicker and it's not quite as forgiving. But this is really easy just to throw in your backpack and go and not have to worry about anything. So I definitely loved coloring this way and definitely be doing this more. I'm not gonna show this whole hummingbird because I'm sure I bored you to tears, but I hope I've inspired you to use your real brush markers and given you some tips along the way that you can use. And I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.